So, I'm going to sound a little congested today. I don't know if it's allergies or whatever um, that are causing, like, multiple fucking lymph nodes to pop up, but I'm assuming it is. Um, so, um, the, uh, the, the, the walls of my nose are closing in, and I might sound a little bit off. Um... But uh, I, th I thought today I would talk about space globalism, uh, a thing that I might... Well, I mean, I'm pretty certainly going to make a full fucking video about this because uh, it's, a, it's a subject that has had me very angry since I realized it, right? Before I get into anything, uh, this vlog series this month is sponsored by OPSEC Drip. There will be a link in the end of the video to subscribe. Uh, basically, uh, it's a, it's a guy in a shemag reading a uh, 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 like news report, the things that have been going on during the day, and uh, fr from a decidedly libertarian perspective. And uh, if you decide you want uh, sixty second news bites in your life, uh, you can either watch him on YouTube, or hit up his podcast. But at least sub on YouTube. Subbing on YouTube is free, and it'll let him know that his uh, money went to something good. I'm gonna fucking... It, it's considered a sign of dishonesty to touch your nose, but I don't want to edit this. And, uh, started to feel a sneeze coming on. Uh, anyway. Fucking... That being said, uh, space globalism. So the first... Uh, real realization I had was about Halo. Um, <laughs> and and the Halo franchise, for those of you who don't know, involves kidnapping children, uh, <laughs> replacing them with clones that will die so that the parents don't ask too many questions, and um, taking those kidnapped children and turning them into super soldiers to police the universe, basically. Like, I can't find a better way to explain it. Um, and when I realized that, when I realized the full extent of that, and when I realized that the literal organization in question here is the fucking UN, it all became very sinister. Look, I, I enjoy the gameplay 100%, okay? It's a good game, gameplay-wise. Uh, I, I liked the Forge. I built uh, terrible maps designed to fuck with people in the forge, um, and and like I wasn't bad at the game. I'm not trying to claim that the game itself isn't fun, but the lore behind it is statist as fuck. Like we have a uh, 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 UN soldier going and policing distant worlds. Uh, a UN soldier raised after being kidnapped. Imagine that, you know? Imagine thinking that this was ethical and acceptable because the government did it. Nobody probably would. Uh, but it's it's the backstory of the character. He's, he's a kidnap victim. Um, and he's going off to enforce government policy around the world because he never er, around the universe because he never learned any better. Um, he always grew up thinking that this was the way it should be. Uh, that's fucked up. Uh, I, I got into an argument with, uh, a, a fake libertarian who thinks universal health care, education, and basic income, um, are libertarian principles. When, you know, if you look at his pages, he's doing nothing but mocking third parties and, uh, and, and supporting Tulsi Gabbard, and then he comes at me saying that, you know, oh, how dare you fucking accuse me of being a Democrat. I don't fit in the Democratic Party. You do. Uh, but anyway, that, that, that aside, oh, and, and the woman who defended him apparently, uh, don't, like, said that, uh, she, that, that he shouldn't spend any time, uh, with me, that I'm not worth the time. Uh, she apparently donated the f maximum amount to, the Tulsi campaign, twenty seven hundred dollars. I don't know. I might make a video on that. Um, still watching dogs, by the way. Um, but like, I got into an argument with this guy because he posted this um, Star Trek meme 
and said that this is the libertarian future he wants. And I couldn't help but tell him that that's not libertarianism. It's, it's still a, a, a federal government, a federation, right? Um, and it's, it's spreading this, this particular brand of rule throughout the universe. It's like property free, if I remember correctly, because it's scarcity free and you can just replicate what you want. It's a very rigid military command structure, which you can't really deviate from. Um, it's not libertarian. It's space globalism. Um, <laughs> it's so that's a thing, you know, I, I, I really can't think of an example in the Star Trek universe of that not being the structure. Um, I, and like, I think the closest I would say you get is, is Voyager. And that's only because they're stuck in the middle of nowhere, you know? So suddenly things might seem to start to fall apart a few times, but it's still mostly just the same. Everybody's maintaining the same social order. Star Wars, may the fourth be with you. Oh, fantabulous. We got, we got a meme, we got a hashtag that isn't at all old after like the decade that it's been being used. Um, or more, I don't fucking know. Um, but Star Wars is possibly the most frustrating example because people into Star Wars think it's somehow an anti-Empire message when really what it is is it's the message that if you spread your empire too thin, you might fuck up. But it's still fundamentally government forces against government forces. Um, the rebels are fighting for their brand of government. That's it. Um, I mean, if you consider maybe the Constitution to be a libertarian thing, you could make a loose-knit, not very good argument that Star Wars is a constitutional libertarian thing because the rebels are... Similar, similar to the rebels in 1776, right? That would be a terrible thing to do, and you shouldn't do it. But at least it'd be more accurate than saying that it's, like, pro-liberty message. I mean, also, like, it has really bad philosophy. I, I, I need to see all these vlogs are just, like, me being informal. But, like, I, I could go off on all of these sentences and, and make full-on videos about it. So I probably will, but like the the <laughs> only Sith deal in absolutes when every Jedi tenet is an absolute, you know. Uh, <laughs> there is do not uh, do or do not. There is no try. Try is just effort. If you try and succeed, then you've done. You know, uh, black and white ethics where where the Sith and the Jedi are pretty much the paradigm. Um, and, and, and where you have to go with their particular school of philosophy or you're entirely wrong. Like, I, I don't think it's bad to, for instance, hate pedophiles. Um, but hate is a terrible thing according to Star Wars mythos because hate is born of fear or whatever. No, no. Sometimes hate is just born of you knowing the consequences of acceptance. So forming a disgust that repels you from engaging further with the subject, you know, um, like, like it, it's, it's not that simple. It's whenever you hear like people use Star Wars philosophy, just remind them that this is a space opera of space wizards and that really, if they're going to like, you know, use it as an, as an ethical framework They'd better be willing to make their statements very complete because most people just pick and choose which elements of it they like, you know? It's it's very hacky, right? I, like, I don't think it's not entertaining, right? I, I, I wouldn't hate watching Star Wars. I don't hate watching Star Trek. And I didn't hate playing Halo. Like, these things can be enjoyable. But when you recognize the propaganda, it starts to become really fucking clear, you know? I think a really good example of a critique of this is Firefly. And I think it's a shame that they didn't get 
another season of the show. Because the thing with Firefly is, um, and spoilers for those of you who have not seen the series, you can skip ahead like maybe a minute. But the thing with Firefly is that these people are rebels and, and, and like roustabouts and they're part of a, of a rebellion that everybody thought was successfully crushed, but they're still pretty mad about it. And then eventually they go off and they find out that the people behind the, the structure of the space government have been <laughs> mass experimenting on people and trying to control them. Um, and that they use this as a method of, uh, of, of tamping down rebellions without having to, you know, get their hands dirty. Uh, so they, they've got, like, MK Ultra ish like, subjects, uh, stolen, um, like, like the, uh, the, the Spartan program in Halo, and eventually one of them goes rogue. Um, it's really fucking good, it's an intriguing concept, and it really would have been nice to see that fully play out. So many Firefly fans want to see it play out, right? But it hasn't yet, you know? Um, but, but to be very specific, that's what I like to see. I like to see people taking down governments and not trying to replace them with a new one, you know? Let's say, you know, they take down the government and it goes away. Uh, they don't need another one because the... <laughs> The, the general principle was that if this was the government that existed, it doesn't have any right to exist. So even if we abolish it and things go chaotic, etc., um, th that doesn't justify the existence of a fundamentally unethical institution. Um, and so we'll take that chance and we'll just do it, right? That's fucking great. <laughs> You know, when, when, when Sonic the Hedgehog goes into space and inexplicably breathes in the vacuum, um, I'd still rather see that because at least he's going into space to fight a government and not replace it with a new one. So <laughs> the whole, the whole thing I'm trying to say is when you talk about media, you should talk about it in the context that it's in. And you should bring up the full flesh of the context. If you don't, you're going to end up with propaganda. And you're going to fall susceptible to it in terms of what you're willing to ethically accept as a part of your own framework. Um, and I don't want to accept a bunch of unethical things into my framework. So I choose not to engage with media like that most of the time. I mean, the closest I get normally is Halo. And that's only like, you know, I haven't even played that in years, to be honest. Um, I plan to get things like the Master Chief Collection at some point, only to play with uh, some friends who want to play some Reach with me. But like, effectively, I, I haven't even interfaced with any of the stuff I've talked about uh, in a negative light in this video in a while, because I just can't get past the ph philosophical message and the political messages. I just can't get past the fact that we're talking about a uh, spreading empire, universal tyranny, and people just pass it off, and it's fine. I mean, like, I think fundamentally, that, and, and this is what I'm going to have to elaborate on, that space globalist fiction uh, is there to tell people to accept things the way they are and to keep their gaze trained on the sky like maybe space is their liberty solution where they can find freedom and purpose, right? Instead of, they're not going there because they're not one of the oligarchs who have enough money to be taken to the Mars uh, terraforming colony that Elon Musk is trying to build. They're not the people that the government will approve to go there anyway and they don't have the money to be taken there. And it would suck anyway because it's going to suck there. Um, but that doesn't matter because the space program loves this science fiction, which makes it seem all hunky-dory la-di-da. Like, that's why I like Heinlein, because he very clearly put it, like, in stark terms that made it seem like the difficult thing it would be. 
Like, the most libertarian example I can think of is The Moon is a Harsh Mistress. And that's about a prison colony, right? I, I just... <laughs> There's, like, so much in culture that's designed to reaffirm the status quo. That's designed to take the existing system and say, this is how it should be. You know, as long as they're not Darth Vader, as long as they're not choking people with the Force and being big baddie and blowing up the planets, it's okay that the U.S. government dropped two nukes on Japan. It's okay that the U.S. government has systematically decimated any opposition throughout the world so that all they have to do is snap their fingers to make a foreign policy move that controls any tiny opposition they have. It's totally fine. Because <laughs> otherwise, Darth Vader shows up. You're supposed to sympathize with the lesser of two evils in these situations. You're supposed to sympathize with the Federation because there might be Borg. But you don't realize that this sort of thing is like making you a part of a hive mind itself. And uh, when I attack these sorts of things publicly, it gets a decent chunk of people angry. I'll tell you that. Um, <laughs> and I'm fine with that because it means that I got through at least a layer of their defenses to the point that they decided they needed to strike back. Little reference there. Like, let me be real clear here. It's still fiction. It's still just, you know, not real. But a lot of people make their mentalities based on fiction. It's the reason Konkin used things like Heinlein to get through to people. It's the reason sci-fi could describe a libertarian future. But it could also massively hold a libertarian future back. If you're constantly focused on a fictional world and you're not actually changing the one you live in. So I want to caution against space globalism and this space fantasy. Um, because humans suck. And the likelihood is that humans would suck on another planet, too. So, the problems aren't going to be fixed by space if the problems aren't going to be fixed here on Earth. And ultimately, we need to earn our place in the stars. We need to be the kind of person who's not going to fuck up space, too. And if the human race is, then we've made our bed and we will be extinct in it. Because the ultimate truth is that humans aren't going to behave differently because they're on another rock. If you have bad personality traits, it's still going to extend there. And if it is just going to be Earth plus, Earth plus asteroid mining, Earth plus solar farming on Mars, Earth plus all of these things that you can do closer to the sun, or, well, whatever, Mars is further away. Um, all these things that you can do, like, in space that you can't do on, on fucking Earth. Like, it doesn't change the fact that humans are still going to suck if they want to. There's still going to be Vaders in space if you use Star Wars as your modus. Because people weren't willing to make the strong enough philosophical decision to say that, hey, maybe I should get better guidance, right? Um, there are certain things that are really good about the Sith mentality. There are certain things that are really good about the Jedi mentality. Saying that it should be either or and that it can't be both, that's dangerous. And it's the kind of thinking that splits people into the kinds of camps that cause the wars to begin with. Instead, we need to realize how close we are to one another and still push forward. That's the kind of thing that would bring about a true libertarian future. Anyway, this has been a disjointed rant. Um, feel free to sub to my channel, and also feel free to sub to OPSEC DRIP. Um, those links will be available. Uh, right there, show him that uh, his money went to something good, and uh, feel free to send me your hate comments in the comments, because I know there will be some. Uh, smash the state.